a basic Mac mini with two terabyte SSD usually costs around $1,400. But guess what? There are alternatives where you can use an external SSD as your main drive and avoid the Apple tax. In short, for a two terabyte Mac mini, you can save up to $540 if you go the external route. Now you might be thinking, adding an external storage to a Mac mini for storing files or backing it up is a simple process. All you do is plug in your SSD and then you can just start moving your files over. But what if I told you you could actually run your Mac from the external SSD? I mean, installing applications, running programs, and automatically storing your documents, downloads, and everything right onto your user profile. Well, stick around because I'm going to show you how I made that happen with my Mac Mini. There's no disassembly required. In this video, I'll show you how to migrate from an old Mac to the all new M4 Mac Mini and how to turn your external SSD as your main Mac drive. If you're not migrating from an old Mac and just want to do a brand new setup, then watch my other video where I explain in detail how to do that. Now, I'll be using an external SSD enclosure for this project. So I have to buy the enclosure separately and the internal SSD separately. For this project, I'm using an OWC NVMe SSD enclosure that's around $120. I also have a two terabyte Samsung 990 Evo Plus SSD, which is currently at $140. In total, I've spent around $260 for this two terabyte solution. A two terabyte M4 mini from Apple is roughly around $1,400. So I think this is a bargain. It's always good to check websites like Camel, Camel, Camel to see when these parts go on sale for even bigger discounts. To assemble this SSD, I just pop open the SSD enclosure, which can be done by unscrewing and then finally placing the SSD inside and then screwing it back up. And that's it. You can just plug it in and you're ready to go. Also, we're going to have to use a time machine. So if you don't have a time machine set up, you'll need a secondary backup drive or a network storage drive. In my case, I'm using the SanDisk 256 GB flash storage drive for my time machine backup. I chose 256 gigabytes because my total MacBook storage is less than 200 gigabytes right at this point. All right, so the first thing I did was to set up Time Machine on my old M1 Pro MacBook Pro. If you already use Time Machine, then you can skip this step. For the Time Machine process, I'll be using my flash drive like I mentioned before, but first I need to format it. Do this, I open up Disk Utility and then locate the USB drive on the bottom left. And then I clicked on the drive and then I clicked on Erase. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can format this drive properly so that it works with the Time Machine. I named the drive SanDisk and selected APFS as the file system as it's the best option for Apple. Finally, I clicked on Erase button again and then the drive was reformatted and ready to be used with Time Machine. To set up Time Machine, First, I made sure my flash drive was connected, obviously. Then I went into settings and then I searched for the time machine. Then I clicked on add backup disk and then it asked me to choose a disk. In this case, it was the sand disk. Now you can choose to encrypt the backup or not encrypt it. I'm choosing to encrypt it and then I'm putting my password, re-entering the password and then give it a hint in case I forget the password. And that's it. That's all I need to do to set up the time machine. The first backup usually begins within a minute. Depending on the size of your drive, the first backup can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to complete. Once the backup was ready, I booted up my M4 Mac mini, then got on to the setup page. Then I selected my country and then went through the usual steps until I reached the migration assistant. Here I chose to migrate from another Mac and then selected my SanDisk drive, which contained my time machine backup. Next, I was asked to choose my backup I only had one backup available, so I selected it and continued. The migration assistant then displayed a progress bar with all the details about the transfer. Instead of waiting for the calculation to complete, I simply clicked on continue. After that, I was prompted to set my password for the profile. Even though it's the same profile as my MacBook Pro, it still required me to set a new password. So I set it up and then clicked continue. Finally, the migration process began, which took anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for me. But then in some cases, if your storage or your disk size is bigger, then it may, may take more time. Once the migration completed, I was back at my login screen and then I just logged in as normal. Since I use iCloud, I was asked to sign in. So I did. And then finally, I was back at my desktop. 
At this point, I try to make sure that everything was in order, that my restore was successful. I confirmed that by opening up my browser, making sure all my history was there. It was exactly right where I left off, even my browser session. I also checked my most important thing, which is DaVinci Resolve, to make sure all my projects were there. And sure enough, everything was intact. To summarize, I managed to transfer everything from my MacBook Pro over to my M4 Mac Mini's internal drive. But now what I want to do is utilize this external 2 terabyte drive. So from here, what I'm going to do is try to move my profile from my internal Mac Mini SSD onto my external SSD. So I proceeded and connected my OWC SSD. Since it was a brand new drive, it needed to be formatted to correctly work with Apple. I used the spotlight to locate my disk utility. And then once that opened up on the bottom left hand corner, I clicked on the drive and then select erase. And finally, I entered the name of the drive, what I wanted to call it. In my case, I called it OWC. Next, I chose the APFS file format and then I clicked erase. The drive successfully reformatted and everything was ready for the next step. Next, I created a local admin profile. This is crucial because you must use a different profile to transfer your current profile onto the external drive. You cannot do that step while you're logged into the main profile. To create the new user profile, I clicked on settings and then navigated to users and groups. Next, I selected add user and then changed the user type from standard to administrator. I then provided the name of the user, which in my case, I chose M4 admin. I also set the password and then re-entered it and then put the password hint in case I forget the password. Finally, I clicked on create user. After that, the user was created and then I was ready to log out of this profile. So the next thing I did was log out of this current profile. Once I reached the login screen, I pressed the escape key, which showed me all available profiles. I then clicked on the M4 admin and then proceeded with the login. During the login, I was prompted to answer accessibility questions. I was even asked to sign into iCloud and utilize Apple intelligence. I don't recommend doing any of that because we're just going to be logging to this profile maybe once. So don't need to set anything up properly on this one. Now I was ready to move my profile from my internal Mac mini SSD onto the external SSD. In Mac OS 15.1 or earlier, it's a simple process by dragging and dropping the profile onto the external drive. If you're on that version, you can probably do that. But in my case, I'm on Mac OS 15.2. And unfortunately, I have to take the longer route. So the first thing I did was open up Safari and then search for Carbon Copy Cloner for Mac. By the way, I'm not sponsored or affiliated by them. I proceeded with the download of the trial version and then I launched it from my downloads folder. I agreed to the terms and conditions and then clicked on trial. Then I had to specify the source and the destination. With the Carbon Copy Cloner software, you can copy an entire our internal drive onto the external drive. But I'm trying to just copy a single folder, which mainly moves my user profile over from my internal Mac mini to the external SSD without any errors. So for my source folder, I clicked on choose folder, and then I navigated to Macintosh SSD. There I clicked on users folder, and then I clicked on my folder, which is Sean Aslam. Next, I had to choose the destination. For that, I did the same thing and clicked on choose folder, and then clicked on the Oda Lucy drive on the left. In here, since it was blank, I had to create a new folder for my user profile. In this case, I just called it Sean Aslam, as it was the same name on my internal drive. Next, I clicked on the start button, and then a message popped up asking to install CCC's privilege helper tool. Basically, this tool needed elevated privileges to do what it needs to do. I clicked on it, and then the message popped up. All I had to do was drag the fish to the left of the screen, and then the settings for the disk access showed up on my screen. I clicked on the full access option and then entered my password, and then the carbon copy cloner tool had to restart. Now I know it sucks we have to do this twice, but this is the most straightforward approach. Basically, at this point, we had to reselect the source and the destination. And just to recap, we're selecting my user profile folder from the internal drive and then selecting the external folder, which I created earlier. So I went ahead and did that again. And then once I clicked on start, a message popped up saying that some of my files may be deleted during the transfer. So I clicked on preview and then made sure that in the preview, there were no errors 
or any of the files would get removed. And sure enough, everything was clear. There were no errors and everything was ready to, for a smooth sale. I closed the message and then clicked on start again and then clicked on run now. Process went smoothly and then my user profile got cloned onto the external drive. Just to make sure everything happened correctly, I clicked on the show event button and then sure enough, I had no errors or anything went bad. So everything was done smoothly with this tool. Now that I got my user profile copied onto the external drive, the final step was to update my home directory location in the system settings. To do that, I opened up system settings, went to users and groups, and then located my user account, which is Sean Aslam. I right clicked on the profile and then selected advanced option. And then I scrolled down to the home directory location. From there, I clicked on choose and navigated to the external drive OWC and selected my username folder, confirmed the selection. And that was it. My profile was successfully mapped to the external drive in Mac OS. After that step, I rebooted the Mac mini and returned to the login screen. I pressed the escape key to get back to see all the user profiles. And then I clicked on my profile, which is Sean Aslam, and then logged back in. Once I was back in, I had to do one very last and important step. That was granting ownership and permissions to the OWC external drive. Basically what I had to do was grant my user profile ownership to the external SSD. For this step, I clicked on the OWC drive and then I clicked on get info. Then on the bottom left, there's a lock icon. I clicked on it to unlock it and then it prompted me for my password, which I put in. After that, on the bottom left, I clicked on plus and from that menu, selected Sean Aslam and then press select. Lastly, I had to change my read only option to read and write so that I have full control of the drive. That was it. Now my user profile had full access to the external drive. Once I verified everything was in order, including my photos, browser history, all my emails, and most importantly, my DaVinci Resolve worked perfectly and everything was intact. Basically, once I confirmed that everything looked good, I was ready to delete my old profile from my internal drive to free up some space. To delete the old profile folder, I pressed on Command Shift and the letter G typed a forward slash and press enter. This opens up the Macintosh HD folder. Next, I clicked on users folder and then in there, right clicked on the user profile and then chose to move it to trash. It may take a few minutes depending on the size, but eventually everything should be deleted and then this should free up a lot of space on your drive. Now to transfer applications on the external SSD, I first created a new folder on the external drive and named it applications with an uppercase A. Do note that Mac OS is very case sensitive. Then I opened up my internal applications folder and dragged the applications I, that I wanted to move on to the new drive. However, since this process copies the applications rather than moving them, I had to manually delete the applications from the internal drive to free up the space and also to avoid any duplicate. It's important to note that not all applications should be moved to the external drive. And in some cases, not all applications can be moved to the external drive. For instance, DaVinci Resolve is primarily designed to run on from the internal drive. I'm sure you can get it to work off the external drive, but then next time if there's an update or you got to reinstall it, everything's going to be screwed up. Additionally, there's another option for managing applications in the App Store. Open the App Store and then go to App Store Settings and then check the box that says download and install large applications on separate disk Then select the drive. In my case, I chose the OWC drive. And what this does is that it moves larger applications onto the external drive, but any smaller applications less than one gigabyte remain on the internal drive. As an example from the App Store, I downloaded Asplat Legends, which is approximately eight gigabytes. The application got automatically installed on the external drive and that's pretty much it for setting up your external SSD with the Mac mini. By setting up an external SSD as the primary drive on my Mac mini, I was able to save over $540 while maintaining performance and flexibility. My external SSD is actually faster than Mac mini's internal SSD. Now I admit that the process is a little bit complicated. You have to migrate data, format external drives, transfer a user profile, and then you got to tweak up a few things. But I think it's worth it in the end for me, especially. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If it's worth getting the external SSD and then moving your user profile, or is it just better to just pay up at Apple and then get the two terabyte Mac mini straight from Apple? Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell 
so you never miss an update. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you tried to set up yourself. I would love to hear your thoughts. Stay tuned for more tech updates, guides, and hands-on tutorials. Until next time, take care, and then I'll see you soon.